Team selector for Chelsea facing Crystal Palace at home on Sunday afternoon at Stamford Bridge in the Premier League. The final game before the first international break. So it is a little bit frustrating. We're already into an international break when we're starting to get going into the season. But obviously a big chance for Chelsea to bounce back a little bit after that really disappointing display against Severt. Of course, Chelsea, most importantly, did make it through. But it was a lot more stressful than it probably should have been, especially when Nkunku put us 1-0 up early and you've got a free goal lead. And I think over the course of both ties, I think Chelsea just were simply not good enough. I think they made too many individual errors. And I think obviously that's going to be a bigger conversation once we move into the now the proper conference league. But obviously when you think back to last weekend when Chelsea absolutely battered Wolves, there's a lot of positives to take from that game. But it's trying to take that into a, another opponent who I think in Crystal Palace will not maybe give Chelsea the same luxury and space, that, especially on that right-hand side, the left of Wolves' defence, where Out Nori, of course, was kind of going walkabout in the second half as a very progressive fullback, and And obviously, you know, Chelsea trying to orchestrate that space. I, I do think this is going to be an early sign of maybe Maresca's ability to break down a low defence. Of course, Glasnar has kind of implemented a style of football that is a little bit more progressive than, say, Roy Hodgson. But, it, you know, Palace, I think, will still look to come to the bridge and, and be forced to give up a lot of possession. And, of course, of although they, I think they've had a positive window, losing Michael Lise it is still a big loss for them. Um, I, I think it really is, especially in terms of attacking prowess and, and quality they could provide last season. But for Chelsea, it's about ending this little block of games positively at the bridge, the first hopefully Premier League win at the bridge for Enzo Maresca and we walk into the international break feeling good and six points out of nine is not a disaster by any means especially when you factor in our first game was against Man City so team news no Romeo Lavia I mean really concerning that you know he already has picked up an injury that he, he himself said wasn't that serious but he didn't play against a vet he isn't playing this game so hopefully he'll be back before the, uh, the the next game after the international break I believe against Bournemouth but you know bad for him because I, I think a lot of us want to see him play pretty consistently and of course no Reese James some discussion over whether he's actually fit or not but of course he still has to serve one more game of his suspension so again hopefully both Lavia and James will be available by the time we face Bournemouth next month so Chelsea have an amazing record against Crystal Palace. We've actually won all the games against them in the Premier League and the FA Cup since March of 2018. The last time Chelsea lost to Crystal Palace in the Premier League was October of 2017 at Selhurst Park. And of course, that was the same year we lost to them at home just briefly before winning the Premier League under Antonio Conte. So it's been a long time and Chelsea seems to have a knack, even in games where we're maybe not playing as well, to beat Palace. And I think part of that is due to their style of play. Again, they do sit deep they kind of are forced to, to give up a lot of possession and uh, Chelsea at times have just always seemed to find that knack of, of scoring late goals as we did at Selhurst Park last season or just being able to to find the right combination to to beat them and to kind of overawe them especially I think with our with our wide threats and that'll be the hope again I think for Enzo Maresca because I do think this game is is kind of a hopefully for Maresca is a sign that his style of play is starting to click a little bit we are only three league games in but you know this is kind of the archetype of a game that I think Maresca has to really excel at at Chelsea to make his reign a success because in so far you know we played Man City who of course you, it, it's a different type of game a higher quality of opposition so that I think was kind of like this but we played a, a kind of a different team and Wolves it was a very chaotic game they attacked Chelsea Chelsea attacked them it was kind of a very manic unique type of game this one at Stamford Bridge I think is going to be more of what you would come to expect at the bridge where Chelsea are going to have a lot of the ball we're going to be trying to build up from deep trying to bait the press and trying to get our wide threats one-on-one -on -one with with the opposing fullback and kind of doing in possession that kind of slow build up which can frustrate the bridge but hopefully will give Chelsea superiority and ability to control the game and stifle Palace's threats on transition so that's going to be the big test of this game I think for me is it's starting to see us in possession be a lot more not just controlling but effective I think so far when we've tried to build up in that way there have been very few times when we've actually gotten into a really good promising position if it was more to me as I discussed when we spoke about the Wolves game where Chelsea still to me look a lot more comfortable and I guess this is natural 
playing transitional football, which I think suits the players we have, but maybe is not what Enzo Maresca is intending to make Chelsea as a team. So that's going to be the big test. Um, I, I do think that obviously Palace so far have lost both of their first two league games. They were beaten by Brentford, a tight game that they could have won and could have had a goal given to them in the first half. West Ham, another game where they did have opportunities, didn't take them. It kind of feels like Eze is being given a lot of the responsibility to make things happen. Of course, Mateta had a good scoring run at the end of last season. Jordan I too. Um, it's not that they have no talent beyond Eze, but it kind of feels like he is the one that has to make things happen, which, of course, as a, as a team like Palace, you know, it becomes quite obvious, a bit like when Zaha was the big player there, of who you have to try and nullify. So in terms of my team, I don't think this is going to be that much of a of a surprise. I mean, maybe Maresca surprises us, but I think in terms of actual form based on the past week, I don't really see much evidence of a rapid change or players on the first day against Savet that really impressed me enough to say, yeah, you absolutely deserve to be coming into the starting 11 here. Um, the only player I think that comes up is Nkunku, and that's purely because he's Christopher Nkunku, and I want to see him play pretty regularly. But in terms of actual performances, no one really stood out. In fact, a lot of players really disappointed. So Robert Sanchez is naturally going to start again. He is the first choice goalkeeper. Let's hope he can find passes like he did for Nicholas Jackson in the lead up to Palmer's goal last week because that was a brilliant pass. If, if Chelsea can find that sort of space and Sanchez can find that sort of execution, the theory of having him in goal is going to make a lot more sense rather than my concern of him doing other things. But, you know, he, Sanchez obviously uh, needs to be given some credit for that pass because it did lead to a goal. Gusto, Fafana, Colwell, Kukurea. I think this feels to me like the first choice back four at the moment. Um, that isn't to say that this back four have been resolute, have given nothing away, have looked uh, you know, impenetrable so far. There are major concerns about them being isolated. I think Fafana's obviously still coming back into fitness himself. Colwell too. Kukurea has some good moments, but it still feels that Chelsea does have these erratic moments. And Malo Gusto too, I think is still adjusting to this position where he's asked to move into central midfield. But I feel like that will be the back four, at least for the time being in, in, in the Premier League games, at least. Caicedo, I think will kind of play that anchor position. Again, I think he got better in the second half against Wolves, but he were massively isolated and made some errors in the first half. I think that's going to be a massive concern for me. This central midfield balance issue is going to be a big problem. I think for Enzo Maresca. I would like to see him reintegrate Connie Chukameka now he hasn't moved on because the, you actually notice how it's, it's wild to me how much Chelsea spent in this window, how much business they did, but actually how light central midfield suddenly is because you've loaned out Leslie Ogachukwu, you loaned out Andre Santos. Again, Chukameka hasn't got a look in, you sold Connor Gallagher. So really when Romeo Lavia isn't there, the options for what we deem central defensive midfield a very, very slim, which is very, very concerning. Drewsbury Hill, I thought, was awful against Savet. Already, for me, he, he hasn't really impressed at all at Chelsea so far. So he, for me, shouldn't be starting this game. I did like the way Enzo Fernandez was positioned against Wolves. And I think he became very impactful. But in terms of him off the ball, there are still big concerns. So when Chelsea are on the ball, I think there's a lot of things to be positive and optimistic about. But it's not just that part of the game that matters. Maybe you'd argue in this type of game, you have the license to play an Enzo Caicedo midfield because Chelsea can have a lot of the ball. But there's there still are concerns there. I think Palmer will play the position and, and Rowe kind of played against Palace where he's going to have a lot of freedom, which is good to kind of turn, move forward in kind of that inside right channel and kind of uh, float around, which is, is kind of Palmer's best position. But again, it isn't a very offensive central midfield. You just hope that Chelsea have enough uh, firepower and also ability to stop Palace in transition to kind of limit the, the concerns of us not having enough structure to kind of isolate and stop transition opportunities. I think that's my big concern for this game. Madawake, gifted by a senior England call-up, richly deserved, great performance. Hopefully he can continue that with, with another good display here. He's just, you know, he, he likes to be bold. He's got a big personality. Um, so hopefully he can build on that on Sunday. And I think Jackson and Neto will round up the team. If Mudrick somehow starts another game, I, I, I don't really know what we're doing anymore. He did win the penalty, but he didn't do much else against uh, Savet. So for me, that is my starting lineup. I think um, Chelsea should be winning this game. 
it's a great opportunity for Chelsea to walk into the international break feeling positive. Neto, I'm really excited to see. I thought we had a really good second half, obviously, against Wolves. And Nicholas Jackson, too, scoring against Wolves. I think he should have scored probably at least one against Savet. But for him, hopefully, rounding up his tally a bit more. So Chelsea, I think, have enough firepower to win this game. I still think there are doubts about our defence. It may just be at the moment... Chelsea looking to outscore teams, which is entertaining, absolutely, but maybe not the most uh, stress-free way of Chelsea winning games, but we'll see. So those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below, and I'll see you again very soon. All the best. <laughs>